Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I'm here with the second part of my bookstore visit to Second Time Books. I paid a visit on Black Friday, and while I was outside, I got seven books for myself and some gifts. When I went inside, I got 18 more. I'm going to sort this out based off of a broad category, and we are going to start with history. Uh, this is going to be general history, and then we're going to move on to uh, history and science. Uh, the first one that I got, uh, the first one that I'm going to show you is actually the first one that I came across inside, because it was part of the Bookstore Associates and their recommendations. And I think that Brandon is doing a fantastic job uh, operating the bookstore. I think that he can keep the store running for decades. I think that uh, he does a great job using social media, uh, running the online store, and also incorporating where uh, you can buy these particular books in bulk uh, for the certain price and uh, call dibs. The first one to call dibs is the one that gets it. Uh, while you can have them shipped to you, it's uh, generally uh, best to go pick it up. But the first one was based off of one of the associate's recommendations, and that is Dracula, Prince of Many Faces, His Life and His Times, by Radu R. Thorescu and Raymond T. McNally. And this is a biography of uh, Vlad... Dracula the Impaler, and uh, this is, he is the clear uh, inspiration for uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I would, I'm very inclined to learn more about uh, Vlad Dracula the Impaler. The next one is from the American President series, and that is... Uh, the James Monroe biography by Gary Hart. I think it's very interesting that uh, the way that this is put together because you have uh, you have Arthur M. Uh, Schlesinger Jr. Uh, as a general editor, but then he recruits uh, various individuals to write biographies on each president. I think, for instance, there's a particular names that I recognize. Oh, the fact that E.L. Dockrow uh, wrote a biography on Abraham Lincoln. And in my most recent, uh, my, in my previous video, uh, I made mention to uh, John W. Dean doing a foreword to the uh, espionage book about Harding. Uh, he's the... Uh, He's the one that does the Harding biography for the American Presidents series. Uh, you also have uh, Douglas Brinkley doing Gerald Ford. H.W. Brands, who is a, uh, a familiar name, uh, he did one on Woodrow Wilson. Uh, but... Gary Hart was a senator from Colorado who also ran for president twice, uh, once in 1984 and again in 1988. And he was ultimately bogged down by an, extra, an extramarital affair that he had with Donna Rice. Uh, but I'm really curious to see how uh, someone that was involved in public service of that nature uh, in the Senate and ultimately had runs for the presidency, how he is going to approach a, uh, a biography on a president and what kind of, uh, what kind of position is taken uh, and what kind of direction occurs within, in a piece like this.
The next one that I got is The Remarkable Education of John Quincy Adams by Phyllis Lee Levin. Uh, I thought this would pertain to more of uh, John Quincy Adams and his school-related education, uh, but this is a, a biography uh, that tries to, uh, that is taking the approach of viewing John Quincy Adams in a light that may have not been viewed before. Uh, and this pertains to his global education and his experience, uh, which I would like to learn more about uh, John Quincy Adams. Uh, I have a few of his books. I read a book of his poetry, and he is really garnering a great deal of attention for... Uh, views that are really taking shape about his uh, uh, his positions and how he was very much against uh, abolition and was one of the few people in public service that actually was uh, taking steps to uh, creating a plan that would uh, that would put an end to it. I got a general book about uh, presidents and their uh, response to war. Uh, this is Presidents of War by Michael B uh, Bischloss. And this is an overview of each of the presidents and their approach to war. Uh, this was uh, released in 2018, so it probably is going to cover a great range, starting from 1807 uh, and going to modern times. There are a lot of there's a lot of books about the Civil War at Second Time Books, so I wanted to acquire a uh, some specific biographies. Uh, here's one of George B. McClellan, uh, The Young Napoleon by Stephen W. Sears. Uh, this is this sounds like a general biography. Uh, McClellan was uh, a very uh, disdained and uh, I know in a book that I own that rates each of the Civil War generals, he has a one-star rating, uh, lowest possible rating uh, out of a possible five-star rating. Uh, and uh, McClellan also ran for president in 1864 as a Democrat in the attempt to take down Lincoln. I've also been looking to uh, learn some more about different composers and artists, so I've acquired some uh, biographies and overviews on each, and you're going to see a lot of books about artists in upcoming videos, and in particular, Future Hall. But here is the ultimate biography about Brahms. Uh, this is Johann Brahms, a biography by Jan Swafford. And Swafford is looking to uh, answer the questions uh, that pertain to the enigma of Brahms's life. Uh, Brahms himself only wanted to be remembered for his music, but uh, Swafford fleshes out Brahms as an individual and uh, goes over and tries to address the complexities that make up his character and the contributions that it made to uh, his music and its legacy. I came across a lot about uh, history of science and uh, with the great selection that I saw there, I could have really splurged. I could have really, I could have got, I could have walked away with double if I really wanted to, but I had to activate a sense of self-control. 
Uh, so, uh, I did get some good books, though. Uh, one of which is something that would really uh, spark a great deal of uh, food for thought. Uh, this is Pox, an American History by, by Michael Wilrich. And this doesn't necessarily have to do so much about the science and the medical uh, background of uh, the smallpox and other uh, contagious diseases, but it also it pertains to the history and the political arguments that have been made about the uh, ways that we respond to uh, outbreaks of contagious diseases. And I think that uh, Wilridge uh, is making the attempt to uh, present both sides and ultimately try to sort out a, uh, a conclusion to uh, the concerns that are brought upon uh, what is being addressed here pertaining to uh, the uh, vaccinations and uh, other solutions that pertain to uh, issues such as these outbreaks. And it, this was written in 2011, so this was nine years before the uh, COVID pandemic took place. And what interests me about this is that there is an attempt that's being made to present two sides. And I think that there, I think that both arguments, regardless of uh, the political issue at hand, uh, should be brought to the forefront. You want to ask, you need to start asking why more than you do how. And I'm really inclined to see uh, how this responds to the idea of whether or not it takes the direction of why as opposed to how. I got The Knife Man, uh, Blood, Body Snatching, and the Birth of Modern Surgery by Wendy Moore. And this pertains to John Hunter, who was a British surgeon who went against the pretty uh, eccentric practices of medical practices of that day, while also uh, bringing attention to himself as being viewed as an eccentric. This was during a time where bloodletting, uh, where they would, uh, where they would make people bleed, where they would intentionally force people to bleed, or blood or cupping, where they would intentionally create blisters in order to solve the problem. Uh, these were the ways that they would resolve medical issues, whereas uh, Hunter, the central subject of this biography, was engaging in uh, pretty aggressive experiments in order to uh, figure out a better solution to uh, the major concerns at hand. This one's quite a gem because this is a smorgasbord of uh, history and science, and that is the Faber Book of Science. Uh, scientists and writers illuminate natural phenomena from fossils to fractals. This was edited by John Carey, and these include essays of all kinds uh, that uh, cover science in every realm, every category, uh, be it biology, chemistry, astronomy, physics, uh, ecology, uh, just anything pertaining to science, there's an essay that can represent it in here. I garnered some fiction. 
I got uh, two more books by James Herbert. Uh, this is Others, and this is The Magic Cottage. I added another book to my Jose Saramongo a collection. Uh, here is The Cave. Uh, Mario Vargas uh, Loza. Uh, he is a Nobel Prize winning writer, uh, as is Saramongo. Uh, but here is The War of the End of the World. This one really takes perspective into greater consideration. Uh, this is Rat, a novel, uh, told from the perspective of uh, a of a rat, uh, viewed in a very uh, viewed in a very verminesque way, but ultimately the uh, effort is being made to make it to make the rat someone that would garner more empathy. Uh, this is written by Andres, uh, Andres Zanuski. And there is Taiko uh, by Ija Yoshikawa. Uh, Dominica will probably correct me on the way that I'm pronouncing this, because she is an expert on uh, speaking Japanese. Uh, this is uh, a historical novel about uh, feudal Japan. Next, I got The, the Great Penguin Rescue by Diane DiNapoli, and this is... An account, this has to do with Di Napoli's uh, uh, work of rescuing 40,000 penguins uh, during a devastating oil spill. And the fact that she, and it also pertains to her efforts of caring for them and uh, releasing them. Uh, this is something that I'm really eager to check out. Uh, I read The Penguin Lessons back in 2020, uh, and we discussed it on our channel. Uh, I'm really interested to see uh, Di Napoli's uh, experiences of rescuing and caring for penguins. Here we have quite a gem. Uh, this is the complete illustrated Lewis Carroll. Uh, this is all of Lewis Carroll's uh, stories uh, from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland to Through the Looking Glass, uh, Sylvie and Bruno, Su uh, Rhyme and Reason, and then there's other miscellaneous works uh, within this collection. And finally, I acquired the new Soviet fiction, uh, 16 short stories compiled by Sergei Zaligian. Uh, this was put together in 1989 and uh, features a wide array of uh, Russian writers that I'm not as familiar with but would like to get a greater sense of and... Uh, expand my reach as far as Russian literature is concerned. In this case, it's Soviet literature, but from a uh, wider lens, uh, it would be viewed in as Russian literature. Those are the books that I acquired uh, when I was visiting the interior of Second Time Books. I highly suggest that you go and check them out. Uh, they have a wide array of books. I probably would have bought even more if it wasn't for the fact that my self-control kicked in. Uh, I hope you check out some more videos from our channel and the uh, my comeback tour of visiting bookstores will be continuing. For now, keep reading.